بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوعد وأكرمي من نور الفهد اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن أولنك رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بحمدك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني بزيارتك We continue our discussion about shuk This is the third session about shuk And we started reflecting on the hadith about what is the reality, the nature, the essence of gratitude? The last hadith that we recited was about hardening. If you are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hover over someone, who has done bad things to you, who has wronged you, the gratitude requires to forgive and pardon that person. We talked about this. The next hadith is from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. Istakthir linafsika min Allahi qaleel al-rizq تخلصاً إلى الشكر If you have been given little sustenance it's not that everything you like you can buy can afford Okay? Don't let this stop you being grateful even if Allah has given you little you should consider it a lot one of the meanings of Baba Istif'al is to find the object with some quality huh? like for example istakthara means wajattuhu kathira استقل من وجدته قليلا. So if you have been given little sustenance, try to consider it a lot so that you can reach the position of being grateful. Those who are grateful they never underestimate the good that they have received. Even if they receive little, still they never forget. If you help them once, they would always remember and thank. If you have been given lots of resources, lots of money, lots of rest. You have to be thankful. But even if you are poor, still you have to be thankful. Nothing should be underestimated. The fact that you have your life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have health, you have I don't know, family, you have friends, you have iman, Many, many things are there that you should be grateful for. So don't just look at your pocket and say, if my pocket is full, you know, or my bank account is full, I'm going to be thankful. Otherwise, I'm not going to be thankful. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> it's like, for example, you grow up your child, you do everything for him, send him, very good school 
vital interest, arrange his transport. But for some reason, you don't give him that much pocket money. Maybe you think if you, I give him pocket money a lot, you know, maybe it's going to be wasted or maybe he's going to lose his focus on his study. But you have already done lots of things for him. He, yeah. So he shouldn't say, because he has not given me 50 pounds, for example, today to put in my pocket, so he has not done anything for me. So what about your upbringing? What about putting you in this school? What about your dress, your uh, school fees, your transport? Everything is provided. Just don't look at the pocket money. استكثر لنفسك من الله قليل الرزق تخلصا إلى الشكر. In order to get into the position of being thankful, try to consider the little risk that you have received as abundant, as something which is great. So which means don't underestimate, try right? to appreciate and feel really in debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Shukrun ni'mati ijtinaabul maharin. Similar to what we had last week uh, from Imam Ali alayhi salam. شكر كل نعمة الورع عن محارم الله. I gave you the example of a person buying car for his neighbor. You remember the example? So Imam Sadiq says, gratefulness for a blessing is to avoid doing haram, avoid committing sin. وتمام الشكر. And if you want to have a complete شكر. In addition to avoiding haram, قول الرجل الحمد لله رب العالمين is to say all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds or the Lord of the intelligent inhabitants of the world. Of course, this is the end of it. Otherwise, we said if you acknowledge by your heart, even before saying this is shokr. But it's like, you know, uh, putting, uh, uh, you know, what they call, they call icing on the cake? Mm -hmm. Like that, if that's the end, end of it. Women know better. <laughs> okay. So, the next hadith, من أنعم الله عليه بنعمة إمام صادق عليه السلام. Exactly what I said just now. To acknowledge by your heart. من أنعم الله عليه بنعمة فعرفها بقلبه. Whoever Allah has bestowed a blessing upon him, and then he recognizes, he acknowledges with his heart. فقد أدى شكرها. He has already done shukr. He has fulfilled the requirement of being grateful. So it's a matter of acknowledging by your heart. If you acknowledge by your heart and say it, it's great. If you acknowledge by your heart and even don't say it, still it's good. Maybe for some reason someone has not had chance to say it. But the main thing is heart. But if you don't acknowledge by heart and just say something, it's not that much powerful. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi another hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. It's about Prophet. When Rasulullah was faced with something which was making him happy, something good was happening. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله إذا ورد عليه أمر يسره when something which was making him happy was happening to him he used to say قال الحمد لله على هذه النعمة 
all praise is due to Allah for this blessing. For example, if he was given the news of a child being born, I don't know, a victory, someone who was ill was you know, recovered, anything good, he was saying, Alhamdulillah, ala hadhim وَإِذَا وَرَدَ عَلَيْهَ أَمْرٌ يَغْتَمُّ بِهِ And if he was facing something which was making him sad. يَغْتَمُّ غَمْ is grief. Something that made him sad. Still he was praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال الحمد لله على كل حال all the praises do to Allah under all circumstances. So it's not that you are grateful when you receive something good and then when you don't receive something good, you are not grateful. You are grateful all the time. For example, you go to doctor, you have some pain. Sometimes doctor gives you medicine you have to be thankful. Sometimes doctor says a virus, you have to wait. You have to be patient. You shouldn't complain. No, you didn't give me medicine, you have to give me medicine. He knows when to give medicine and when not to give medicine. In all circumstances, you have to appreciate. Yeah? You see, some people sometimes you know, fight the doctor, you know, why you don't give me medicine? Give me something. <laughs> but he says, you know, you have to just be patient. So if Allah gives us something that we, with our little understanding, understand and appreciate and are happy, maybe sometimes he doesn't give you something to celebrate or enjoy, but still that is something that you have to be grateful. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Once I think I gave you this example or some of you that there was a person who was a very famous, you know, uh, Sufi master. And he asked a young man from Balkh, the city of Balkh. Balkh is now in Afghanistan. So he asked this young man, uh, sorry. Maybe the young man asked him. The young man asked him that what is your definition of shukr? He asked this master. What is your definition of shukr? He said, whenever we have, we are grateful. And whenever we don't have, we don't complain. Unfortunately, most of people, when they don't have, they complain. But he said, no, when we have, we are grateful. When we don't have, we don't complain. This young person said, this is something that dogs do in our city. This is not enough. In our city, if you have a dog, you know, for, for example, you know, shepherds, you know, had dogs, yeah? If you give them food, they appreciate. If you don't give them food, they don't, you know, attack you. You are patient. Yeah? So this person said, then what is your understanding of shukr? He said, whenever we have, we give to others. Whenever we don't have, we are grateful. Then this Sufi master was, you know, very humbled. He said, you know, I was never humble like this person. I don't know whether he was going to hose that young man or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was going to hose it, inshallah. So, if you have and you are grateful, it's not enough. When you have, you have to be extra grateful. And when you don't have, you have to be grateful. Maybe another example is this. I think this example also is a good example. Imagine 
you go to a course and there is very good teacher always comes to the class while he is prepared really wants to teach you ask you to study to do mobile <laughs> <laughs> and introduces good materials for you then the time of exam comes if you get good result you should thank him don't say you know i was you know studying well so <laughs> it was my achievement without teacher you couldn't learn but if you get bad result you should say i don't thank him all the year he was helping you if you don't didn't get didn't get good results because of you unfortunately when people good result they say i studied very hard if they don't get this other exam was difficult <laughs> or the teacher was not good <laughs> you know so you have to be grateful whether your exam result is good or bad so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether he gives us or doesn't give us we should not complain we should always be grateful There is a quotation from Misbah al-Shari'ah, which is attributed to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Adna shukr, the lowest level of gratefulness. Adna, adna, sometimes means nearest, sometimes means lowest. What is the female for adna? Dunya, Adna is male for male, Dunya is female. Muzakkar, Mu'annat, yeah? Adna, Dunya. Adna shukr, the lowest level of gratefulness, is ru'yatun ni'mah min Allah. Is to see that the blessing that you have received comes from God. من غير علة يتعلق القلب بها دون الله without connecting it in your heart to any cause other than Allah you see it coming from God if there have been other people involved that is under God not independent from Maybe other people have helped you, and inshallah we will say that you have to be grateful also to the people who are occurring in the process, but not independent from God. You should see, should believe that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَّضَى بِمَا أَعْطَى So, first, you see it coming from God. Second, you should be pleased with what he has given you. Don't disobey him with the same blessing that he has given you. If he has given you a good voice, don't use it for sinful singing. If he has given you beautiful face, don't use it for haram if he has given you money don't use it for haram if Allah has given you intelligence you are very sharp don't use it for making you know plots against people so use that ni'mah in pious way Allah ta'asiyahu bi ni'matih don't disobey him with his own blessing وَتُخَالِفَهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ وَنَهْيِهِ بِسَبَبِ نِعْمَتِهِ Don't disobey him in what he has commanded or prohibited because of this blessing. You have to be more pious, more obedient because of this blessing. Not that, na'udhu billah, use it against him. So, if you reflect on these hadiths, then you realize that 
Shukr is not just saying Alhamdulillah or Shukr and Allah. Shukr is a matter of understanding, ma'rifah. It's a matter of acknowledgement of the heart. Sometimes you understand, but you don't acknowledge. Do you accept? Sometimes you see that someone has helped you, but you don't want to acknowledge. Sometimes, unfortunately, it reaches the point that even when people have done good to us, we take it as a bad sign. For example, my mother-in-law gave me this uh, uh, dress because she wanted to say your dress is not beautiful. <laughs> she didn't mean this. She just wanted to give you this dress. You said, no. She gave me dress meaning this. Or for example, you know, if says, you know, something as a device, you can take it in a bad way. It's possible. So first you have to understand what you have been given. Then you have to acknowledge it as a kind of blessing, as a kind of uh, grace. And therefore, you should develop more respect, more love for the one who has given you this. It can be a person, it can be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because shukri is not only for Allah. Shukri is for Allah, shukri can be for people. And inshallah, we will talk about shukri for people also. So, a matter of understanding, a matter of acknowledgement, and it would lead to acting in accordance to the pleasure of what who has given you. When you acknowledge you, that he has done a favor to you, he has blessed you, then automatically your attitude towards that person improves. You feel more humble, you feel more, you know, appreciative, and you would not do anything against him. Actually, you try to do something to please him. Yeah? Because when someone gives you something, you should try to return. If you are not able to return, at least appreciate. But if you don't return and you don't appreciate and use what he has given you against him, then it's really a sign of being a very ungrateful person, a very bad person. So this is the reality of shukr. The next hadith is about who are the most grateful people. Amir al Mu'min said, Ashkarun Nas. What is Ashkar? Esme Tafdil, yeah? Superlative. Ashkarun Nas means the most grateful people. Agna'uhum is the most content. Gana'a, Rane, content. Yeah? If you are a person who is content with what he has been given or she has been given, you are very grateful. Those who are content, they always try to appreciate what they have. And even if they, you know, for example, want more, wanting more doesn't make them forget what they already have. Yeah? You can really enjoy what you have and say to Allah, if possible, please give me more. But not saying, you have not done anything, you have not done enough you know, for me. When are you going to be giving me? No. So those who are more content, they are more grateful. وَأَكْفَرُهُمْ لَنَّعَمْ أَكْفَر comes from Kufran. أَكْفَرُهُمْ The most ungrateful people for blessings are أَجْشَعُهُمْ أَجْشَعَ Like أَشْجَعَ But Jim is before she. أَجْشَعُهُمْ Means the greediest ones. Those who are greedy, 
they can never be pleased. They can never be satisfied. Okay? Qana'a is very important. To be pleased what, with what you have been given. To please with what you have. Not in the sense of you don't want to improve. In the sense that you appreciate what you have. You know, many times, unfortunately, we don't appreciate what we have and we want more. And when we are given more, again, we want more. So you are never happy. But you can be appreciating what you have and try to have more. But if you don't have more, you are still happy. If you have more, you are happy. So you are always happy. Okay? Actually, the more you worry, the less chance you have for happiness and for progress. Those who are content, their energy is saved so they can perform better. Yeah? When you are not happy, your energy is wasted. So it's better to be happy so that you save energy, you focus, and inshallah you succeed. Finally, the last hadith for today. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam said, Ashkarukum lillah, Ashkarukum lillnaz. The most grateful among you towards Allah are those who are most grateful towards people. Some people, unfortunately, get it wrong. They think it's just enough to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, they don't even thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> because I think if you are grateful, you are grateful all the time. It's impossible to say, I am only grateful to Allah. It means that you are not really grateful. Someone who is grateful is humble. So he feels obliged by any person who does something good for him. So those who are very grateful to Allah, you can see that they are also grateful to other people. And you can then use this in a reverse way. If you want to be, uh, uh, for example, you want to check yourself. Am I thankful to Allah or not? See what people tell about you in society, in family, in community. Do people say he's a person that we, when we do something for him, he appreciates or she appreciates or not? If people say that you have been grateful to them, then there is this hope that inshallah you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people say he's ungrateful, he never, you know, appreciates, he never acknowledges. So it means that with Allah is also the same. Okay? This is reverse, you know, acts. You have studied mantat, yeah? So it's acts and naqis. If someone is grateful to Allah, he's grateful to people. So if someone is not grateful to people, he's not grateful to Allah. It's accent at least. P, Q, then not Q, not P. Okay? So, inshallah, we should try. And as I told you in the first session, this is the key for success in dunya and akhirah. If you want to get close to Allah, you have to be thankful. If you want to get close to people, if you want to be loved by people, you have to be grateful. People love those who are grateful. And no one loves those who are not grateful. Maybe they tolerate them, but they don't love them. If you are a grateful brother or sister or daughter or son or father or mother or husband or wife, definitely your relation with people will improve. If you are not grateful, you would suffer. I don't think you can find any person who loves those who are not grateful. And everyone wants people who are grateful. And the more grateful you are, the more appreciate. Sometimes people think that we need to, for example, be honest. And they mean by honest to 
for example, thank and at the same time complain. Thank and criticize. For example, my wife has prepared food for me, for example. Or my husband has purchased for me a gift. I want to be honest, say thank you, but it has this problem. <laughs> thank you very much, but uh, it's, it's too salty. This is not good. Why you need to be, this is not honesty. This is lack of, you know, <laughs> intelligence. You are, you know, a spoiling. Even sometimes, you know, even if someone has not done something great for you, you should appreciate. Yeah? Maybe, for example, someone brought for you a gift that you have tens of it at home. Okay? It doesn't mean that you should not appreciate and say, you know, honestly, I have many of these at home, you know, please don't <laughs> give it to me. No. You have to appreciate and here, it's not a matter of dishonesty if you appreciate. Mm -hmm. Or for example, if you praise a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes flattering is good. Flattering in order to deceive people is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Many ulama say, for example, if you flatter your teacher, it's good. If you flatter your father, mother, it's good. Yeah? Sometimes you have to flatter your children to give them confidence. You say, you know, you are the best child, the most trustworthy child. You are the most beautiful, for example. <laughs> this flattering is not bad because you don't want to deceive. You want to encourage, encourage to give him confidence and this can help. So you have to understand the difference between being dishonest and being honest, but in a positive way. If I don't say your problems in order to help you to gain or keep your confidence, this is not bad. In the end, it should be with good intention for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even I remember, you know, uh, there was a very spiritual person in Tehran. He used to say that sometimes some of these du'as that Ahlul Bayt salam say, some of the things they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe for us, we cannot say it honestly, <laughs> because too much above us. But there's no problem, you can say it. For example, if you read in a du'a that I thank you from the bottom of my heart, for example, with all the cells of my body, with all the hairs of, on my head. Of course, this is not the way we are thanking Allah. But still, you can say it. It is not harm here, you know. This is not dishonesty. This is like a person who has set up an ideal for himself and says, I want to go to that direction, but I have to repeat and repeat <laughs> till I get there. So, even if Sometimes you have not understood what you have received in that high level. Still, you can say it so that, inshallah, one time you get to that point. So, sometimes flattering can be good. Sometimes, you know, praising a lot can be good. Without bad intention, of course. Without, you know, trying to deceive people. Just in order to appreciate and in order to improve. Especially when it comes, for example, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that no matter what we say, it's still not enough. So you can use those words. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to include us among the people who are grateful towards Him and towards anyone who has had any favor upon them. Rabbil Alameen. Yes, sir.